Live stream'e girince herkes de e, Facebook bir e, şey geliyor, mesaj geliyor. Mesela bu grupta e, live stream başladı işte, katılmak istemiyorsunuz. Herkes şimdi bir girsin, bekleyelim. Şu anda giren yok herhalde. Şu an bir kişi var. Veronika mı var acaba? Veronika büyük ihtimalle var. Bizi duyuyorlar mı peki? Şu anda bir kişi duyuyorlar. Bir kişi duyuyor. Ya şu anda duyuyorlar. Şimdi üç kişi var. Vay çok kalın. Şu gözden görüyorsun değil mi? <gülüyor> ne kadar bekleyeceğiz? İşte biraz daha bekleyeceğiz. Veronika ile yazışıyor musun sen bu arada? Ne diyor? İşte biraz bekleyeyim Yani. İsterseniz biraz konuşun, merhaba diyeyim. <gülüyor> İki kişiye. Gelsinler böyle en baştan başlayalım. O beş yıl toplam kaç olması lazım? 25. Şu anda beşteyiz. Ben içerim de. Veronika başlayın. Bir şey başlayın. Bir şey söyleyeyim mi? Hello guys. Uh, we are waiting for the other people. Uh, around 40... 2-3 uh, minutes. Uh, let's wait a, a little bit. Beş kişi de gel, bence gelseler gelirlerdi şimdi. Değil mi? Evet. Ha? Evet. Şu kişi kaç? Altı dakika geçiyor. Altı oldu. Biz yavaş yavaş başlayalım. Başlayalım mı? Aynen başlayalım. Uh, yes, I wanna first introduce myself to you. I'm Dr. Cenk Şen, professor of plastic and reconstructive surgery. My my main uh, area of interest is the nose surgery, rhinoplasty, breast and face uh, aesthetics. I'm sorry for the uh, I had a severe toothache just a few hours ago, and I had a dental treatment, so I have some speaking problems. The tilt of my upper lip, probably you can see from there. And uh, today's topic is probably, uh, as far as I know, is mainly the breast surgery. And shortly we'll try to mention the details about the rhinoplasty. Uh, for the breast surgery, I mean mainly breast aesthetics. What we do <coughs> is one breast augmentation, uh, second breast reduction. Uh, and the other main topic is the breast lift and breast lift together with the augmentation. And sometimes we uh, do some kind of breast reconstruction after uh, cancer treatment, uh, but it's not just as frequent as the other surgeries I've mentioned to you. Uh, breast augmentation is mainly done with the silicone implants throughout the world. Uh, were, but uh, in some patients were suitable for the fat injection. In some patients, we prefer the fat injection techniques. Uh, how we do this kind of surgery? First, we uh, make some measurements and try to plan the size of the implant, plan the uh, pocket that we place the implant, 
uh, and the shape and size of the implants, the details of the implant. And uh, during the surgery, we make a small uh, incision uh, mainly under the submarine folds below the, the, the breast tissue. And it's more or less five centimeter incision depending on the size of the implant that we plan. And we place this implant into the pocket that we prepare. And we have sizers during the operation. Uh, we check the different size and shapes of the implant and uh, sit the patient during the operation and decide which uh, implant fits to that patient best and then place the permanent implant uh, to perfect position, uh, suture the incision site and the stitches. All stitches are internal, there's no external stitch. Uh, all are absorbed by the body and there will be two drains coming out from each breast uh, to remove the extra collection of fluid and blood inside the, that pocket, I mean the implant pocket. Uh, usually we remove all those drains next day after the surgery, but depending on the amount of drainage, this time maybe a little elongated, maybe a few days after the operation. And uh, the next day I remove the drain, you can have your shower, uh, but the breast will look a little hard and swollen. Uh, Day by day, the swelling will reduce, decrease, and more or less three to four months after surgery, you will not even feel that there is an implant inside your breast. Uh, it softens, it gets its final shape, looks much better with time. Uh, the risks of the surgery are infection, hematoma, which is valid for all the other surgical procedures, and the, the implant uh, forms a capsule around it. Uh, but in some patients, this, this capsule formation is a little hard and it may end up with uh, what we call capsule contracture. If it's strong, I mean, it, it's, it has grades. If it's three to four grade of capsule contracture, then we have to remove it, uh, this capsule, and place another implant. But this is a very, very rare complication. Uh, I can say that in my professional life of 25 years, I haven't even seen that kind of huge capsule contracture. Uh, the other risk, uh, the, the, the most frequently asked questions is uh, if it causes a breast cancer. This implant, silicone implants, never cause breast cancer. But uh, in recent two or three years, it's been found that the capsule around the implant uh, shows some tumor formation, is what we call a kind of lymphoma. Uh, it's one over 300,000 patients. It's, it's again a very rare complication. If it's seen, then we remove this capsule and place another implant or just follow the patient without the implant. Uh, those are the main complications of this surgery. Uh, there is not a deadline to remove this implant. If there is not any complication, you can use this implant for lifetime because the technology is the recent technology. So uh, you cannot rupture it by yourself. You cannot give any harm to this implant. Um, what should I mention about this? The breastfeeding, uh, the implant, uh, the breast, breast augmentation of the implant uh, never causes any problem with breastfeeding because it's <clears throat> far beyond the breast, uh, breast tissue, uh, just under the breast or under the muscle. Uh, you can breastfeed your baby freely. And the, the other thing is if it's painful. Yes, it is painful if you place the implant under the muscle. Uh, or in the recent year, we years we use dual plane breast augmentation. That means uh, the implant is covered half by the muscle and half by the breast tissue, uh, which gives the best uh, static result. So uh, if we place the implant under the muscle, yes, it's painful, especially if you move your arms, it's painful. But this pain uh, reduces greatly within a week and uh, I'm sure you'll for forget it uh, few weeks after the surgery. Uh, this is overall a short summary about the breast augmentation. Uh, for the breast reduction, uh, there are many different techniques. Uh, breast reduction ends up with scars, incisions. Uh, the incision around the areola, the one coming down, 
and the other incision is under the submarine fold, what we call the reverse T incision. But in some patients we can do, depending on the size and shape of the breast, we can do only periareolar, what we call again, donut uh, reduction, periareolar or the lollipop around the areola and the other incision from the areola coming, coming down to the submarine fold. But to decide which gives the best result depends on the patient's uh, shape and size of the breast. <laughs> so we, before the operation, uh, we make some measurements, planning, it almost lasts half an hour time, we make some de uh, detailed anthropometric measurements and planning to reduce the breast size and uh, then <clears throat> depending on those drawings we plan the surgery and remove the extra tissue. So uh, as I told you there are different techniques. Uh, for the breast reduction, so complications again or the risks of the surgery changes from technique to technique. Uh, let's say if the, pa the breasts are very huge and if we uh, plan a free nipple technique then that means that patients cannot breastfeed and cannot feel the nipple areola complex. But if we do, uh, let's say, a pedicle technique, inferior pedicle or superomedial technique, that means the uh, the risks of uh, breastfeeding or just uh, sensation problems are very, very low. So this again indicates that uh, the risks and complications of this surgery depends again the patient's own shape and the size of the breast. So the scar, uh, again there will be two drains. Uh, all incisions are internal incisions, stitches are inside the incision site. They're absorbed by the body. Uh, the scar will look a little red and hard in the early days after the surgery. It softens, fades day by day. And at the end of one year, the scar is almost very tiny. But for all operations, uh, the scar quality mainly depends on the patient's own wound healing characteristics. It differs from patient to patient, but the breast area in more than 99 percent of the patients, the scar heals very well. In some patients, it's even inconspicuous. No one can see the scar. And the other operation uh, is the breast lift or breast lift with augmentation. How we plan this, it's, it's especially in the ladies in, uh, after one or a few childbirth and breastfeeding because with time, the, during the pregnancy and breastfeeding, uh, under the effect of hormones, breast gets enlarged, and during the breastfeeding times, get again keeps its enlarged shape. And after the cessation of breastfeeding, uh, the volume is lost and the breasts go down, sagging, what we call breast ptosis. Uh, volume loss and the skin envelope cannot carry this and the breast falls down. Uh, for this, what we do? We lift shape uh, We lift the nipple complex to where it has to be, excise the extra skin and lift the own tissue in the position that it has to stay. Uh, if the volume is enough for this patient, I mean, if, if there is only sagging, but the volume is enough, when we lift the breast tissue, this volume will give a good shape of the breast, then no need for breast augmentation. But if there is together uh, with the sagging, if there is a severe volume loss, we place the implant, uh, we place the implant, and over this implant, we lift the breast to its uh, original uh, position and shape. Uh, again, there will be similar incisions as the breast reduction surgery. Um, the drains are same, the risks are all more or less same. But this operation, I mean the breast lift together with the breast augmentation, uh, has some risk of revision surgery. It's uh, the operation in the era of plastic surgery that carries the highest revision rate. Uh, after this operation, you have to use a kind of bra that holds the breast from below because we shape and lift the breast tissue with the uh, stitches. If you leave the breasts free, 
this is also valid for the breast reduction surgery. Under the effect of gravity or if you jump too much, if you do heavy sports, if you have any kind of trauma to the breast, then you can open those stitches and breast will fall again now. So to prevent this, uh, three, three months, at least three months, after the surgery, you, can, you have to use a kind of bra that holds the breast from below. As it, it should be as if it's uh, rest on a shelf. So after the healing of the stitches, then uh, the risk uh, is, is disappears after three months. But if uh, I'm talking about the breast lift and augmentation patients, if you do not obey this rule, I mean, if you do not keep your breasts well, uh, then implant is a stable tissue. But if you do not obey this rule, if you do not use a perfect bra, then breast may fall again. So this may end up with a small revision six months or one year after the surgery. Uh, it's because the, the, the risk of revision surgery is the highest in this uh, surgery, the breast lift surgery done together with the augmentation. Uh, I think this is a brief summary of the main operations that we do for the breast aesthetics and I will try to answer your questions. Uh, I have a few questions that you asked in paper in my hands. Uh, one question is, I want to get my breasts together with a bra, without a bra. Is it true that if I ask for to Dr. Duro to be filled with a lot of scar? Yeah, uh, the position, the implants are stable structures. There are hundreds of implant shapes, volumes, it changes from projection, anatomical shape, uh, diameter, volume. So what we do is we choose the best implant uh, size to, that fits to the patient, specific patients well. Uh, actually the aim of all of the aesthetic surgeries is to get a good shape uh, with a natural shape. If you try to uh, exaggerate the result, if you ask a very huge implant, then the risks uh, in the first stage, the capsule contractures, are increased greatly. So, <clears throat> we, change, we uh, choose the implant and place the implant under the breast tissue. Uh, the implant position is mainly determined by the nipple areola position. Uh, every patient has different uh, breast and nipple areola shape. So if the, if the patient has a kind of uh, nipple areola complex located to the side of her breast, then we have to place the most projectile part of this implant under this nipple areola complex. So if the nipple areola complexes are located to the side, then I have to place the implant little side to give a good shape. But if I try to bring the implants to the mid part of the chest tissue to give a better decollete appearance here, uh, then this ends up with the breasts here and the nipple areola complex facing to the sides. So it looks very abnormal. So the main determinant of the position uh, in the transverse axis uh, of the implant is determined by the nipple areola complex. It's almost impossible uh, to place the nipple areola, to actually move the nipple areola complex medially or laterally. So this is the main determinant of deciding the nipple areola complex. To do breast lift with or without implants. Yes, if the volume is enough, I mean the breast is sagging, but the volume is enough, there will be no need to use the implant. We can only do the the breast lift. But if together with the sagging, if the volume is lost, then we have to provide this volume, we have to place an implant, because implant doesn't lift the breast. Implant only lifts the breast maybe one or two cent centimeters. It only volumizes the breast tissue. Uh, the breast lift brings the nipple areola com complex to its original shape. Uh, the, the surgery, I mean the breast lift and augmentation are mainly different things. Breast lift brings the breast tissue skin and nipple areola complex to 
to the original uh, position. Breast uh, augmentation with the implant uh, volumizes the breast tissue. Uh, how is the scarring around nipples? It's, it heals very well because it's just in the transaction between the skin and the pigmented areola, so it heals very well if you're not prone to formation of hypertrophic scar or keloids. Do they stay firm or drop after a while after lift? Yes, you, if you obey the rules, I mean, if you use the bra or if you protect you from any kind of trauma, if you do not do any sports, heavy sports like early after the surgery, uh, they stay firm, they, they stay in the place. But do not, this doesn't mean that, let's say you have this breast lift surgery at the age of 30, and uh, this doesn't mean that at the age of 55 it stays the same. Uh, all aesthetic surgeries, imagine a, a, a river flowing, uh, there is a boat on this river and the aging process, with the aging process, the boat goes with the river. What we do, we, we take the boat from here, bring it back and put it on the river again. So aging process goes on. <coughs> so, but if you do not have the surgery, then this aging ends up with a very severe uh, deformity after this stage. Can breast implants lead to cancer? Yes, I answer this. It doesn't cause breast cancer, but it may cause some kind of lymphoma. Uh, less than one in 300,000 patients. Uh, is a breast augmentation very painful? Yeah, if it's under the muscle, yes, it's painful. If above the muscle, it's not painful. Uh, the plane of the augmentation again changes from patient, pa patient to patient depending on the patient's own shape and type of the breast but mainly in recent years we've been using the dual plane technique which yields the best result, best aesthetic result and uh, for this surgery we cut the muscle under the uh, in uh, incision site and place the implant half under the muscle and half under the breast tissue. How painful is the recovery from breast, augmenta breast augmentation surgery? Yes, it's painful if it's under the muscle, but if the, the pain depends on the patient's own pain threshold. In some patients, even uh, three days after the surgery, they can go back to their uh, jobs. Uh, the same surgery, some patients go back to their jobs 10 days after the surgery. Can women with breast implants breastfeed successfully? Yes, they can. Because we <clears throat> are nothing to do with the uh, canals of the ducts of the uh, milk ducts. We shave our soru var mı? Sorular orada. Yes. Kaç soru var burada? Bir tane. Nasıl göreceğim? Şimdi I'm interested to know if you do master pixie with internal bra and if that transfer can be done at the same time. Yes, uh, master pixie with the internal bra. Normally master pixie or the breast lift surgery. In recent years we mainly do the, uh, I didn't go into the surgical details, but you asked me, uh, the central mount technique. For this, uh, together with this technique, we do the internal bra. Uh, with the dermal flaps, we fix the uh, tissues, I mean the skin and underlying tissues. Uh, with an internal bra, we fix the tissues, the muscle and the rib tissue uh, to prevent the fact the sagging uh, after the surgery. Uh, we use the central uh, lift technique. Uh, we use, not in pa all of the patients, but if uh, she requires we do the internal bra technique and uh, fat transfer can be done at the same time if it's needed to, to place uh, the fat around the breast tissue. If uh, it's needed to place the fat under or around the areola or nipple tissue, it may be risky because uh, during the breast lift surgery we separate all the skin from underlying breast tissue so the nipple areola complex is uh, nourished by the blood vessels coming down from uh, the muscle uh, just above the nipple areola complex. If we try to inject fat to this area, so those tiny, tiny vessels uh, may be under the 
compression, so it may disturb the nipple areola complex, and it may end up with uh, the loss of nipple areola, which is the, uh, I, I forgot to tell you that the risks of the breast reduction and breast lift surgery is the loss of, I mean, the necrosis of the nipple areola complex. Again, I haven't seen even a single patient in my life, professional life, but there is a risk. This risk is increased by the smokers, so I force the patients to give up smoking at least two weeks before the operation. If you smoke, then uh, you're inevitably to end up with the nipple areola complex necrosis, partial or total. So this, it's the same for the fat injection. If fat injection is needed just under uh, the nipple areola complex, if we place the fat, inject the fat to this area, so it may disturb the blood circulation and it may <coughs> Uh, end up with the nipple areola necrosis. Uh, but around the uh, breast tissue, yes, we can do fat injection together with the lift surgery. There is a Russian question. Yes. Да, Анна, здравствуйте. Насчет ринопластики мы поговорим чуть позже. Все детальные ответы на ваши вопросы мы дадим чуть позже. Ринопластичный сортулаж. Позже нам меньше вам. Шейм, когда когда сортулаж. Асанна, буре, я не буду думать, интернет чок я ваш он дучин. Ama ben size böyle gösterirsem... Sen görebiliyor musun? Aha. Şimdi... Another steps for... Yeah, as I told you, the aim of all aesthetic surgery <coughs> is to get a good looking, uh, functional result. So we do not do exaggerated uh, result because the, uh, the bigger the implant size, I mean the silicone implants, that means bigger the diameter. If, the, if you place a very big implant uh, for a patient with a uh, narrow chest size or the uh, narrow diameter breast tissue, so it ends up with the corner of the implant seen or visible by uh, extending down to the axillary area. So whenever anybody looks at you, they can spot that you had a uh, breast uh, augmentation surgery. So our aim is to get a result that everybody looks and loves your breasts, but cannot point out that you had the breast augmentation surgery. Bu kaybı oldu görüntü. Hemen yapıyorum. Soru burada geldi mi? Orada mı görebiliyorsun? The breast implant with the bilateral breast type but it turned out to be not symmetrical. There is any chance to remove your breast implant, get a new one. Yes, we can remove the implant and place a new implant. Uh, but asymmetry cannot be totally corrected with the implant change. Uh, because let's say anatomic implants uh, differ with the volume of 50. Let's say they're more or less 250, 300, 350 or and 40 it goes like this. If the asymmetry is just in between this, let's say your uh, smaller breast is uh, let's say smaller by 20 milliliters compared to the other side. If you place a bigger implant, that means it looks then it looks this side is looks much bigger. So we balance it with some fat injection. Uh, or the other techniques, but asymmetric implants durmadan şunu şifresini şeyden çıkarsın. Uh, again, to decide this, we have to evaluate the result. I mean, the photos, or just to examine the patient, uh, and to choose the technique that gives the best result for this specific patient, specific asymmetry. Do not forget, asymmetry is seen in 80% of the patients, breast asymmetry. Uh, most of the ladies are not aware of this. Uh, is it true that weight loss happens after a breast reduction surgery? Yes, breast uh, reduction surgery, in some patients we remove uh, four kilograms of breast tissues, very huge breasts. So that means you end up with four kilograms of loss of uh, weight. 
but uh, bre breast reduction uh, doesn't help to your overall uh, body weight. Which is must fix it up. And buna job the bashka. The other questions. Buna gela bakko. I'm interested to know if you do must bunu cevapladık. Bu oraya gelen sorulardı. Benim kadar galiba. Var mı? Hangisi? How will getting breast implants affect my ability to be active in play sports? And after the surgery, uh, we do not uh, let you do any kind of sport uh, for one month and no heavy sports for three months. From now on, you can do whatever you wish, but do not forget in <clears throat> breast augmentation, if, it's, uh, if the implants are placed under the muscle, or dual plane, half under, half, half breast. When, if your uh, pectoralis muscles are very strong, uh, whenever you try to move hardly your arms, you can move the implant more or less to the sides and up. We call it animation. It's not seen in all of the patients, but it may be seen uh, after the patient with the uh, implantation, uh, implants under the muscle. Uh, so you can do any kind of sport you wish three months after the surgery. Yes. If you do not have any questions about the breasts operations, then I will. Which type of liposuction do you prefer for, for fat transfer? Uh, which type of liposuction, what do you mean with, with this? Uh, we mainly remove the fat from the abdominal area. Personally, we use the power-assisted liposuction with Tumasan technique and then after we remove the fat, we <coughs> process this fat centrifuge, do some actions on this fat, prepare it, and then uh, do the fat injection. We we use the power assisted liposuction. If it's your question. Hmm? What do your breasts look like after removing your blood? What do your breasts look like after removing your, expanding your breast implants, if I'm not okay with the result? Uh, <clears throat> if you're not happy with the result, I mean the breast augmentation, when you remove the implant, then you'll turn back to your original condition, but even worse because uh, the time of implantation is important. If you had this kind of breast augmentations two years ago, that means the implants inside ends up with a uh, expansion of the skin. So when we remove two years later the implants, then that means this expanded skin will fall down. Okay. So uh, for those patients, if we place a fat injection or do a, a breast lift surgery to give a good shape of the breast. But if you have, let's say, three months ago you had a breast augmentation surgery and you want to have this removed, then for this time will not cause any severe problem. Uh, when we remove this implant, you're going back to your original shape. Uh, which type of liposuction? Is breast reduction surgery risky? Is it painful? Breast reduction is not just pain, just painful surgery, it's not too painful. Uh, the risks are, as I explained you, as valid for all the surgeries. 
infection, hematoma, blood collection, uh, the nipple areola, necrosis, I mean loss of death of nipple areola complex and loss of sensation of the nipple areola complex and at the same time risks of breastfeeding. Those are very, very low risks, okay? Uh, but again, the risks are mainly in the beginning of my speech I uh, talked about, the risks are mainly determined by the patient's own uh, shape and structure of the breasts and the technique that we have to use the specific breast and if you're a smoker, this, the risks are greatly increased, especially the nipple areola necrosis, the death of nipple areola complex. Uh, is the nipple sensitivity affected of a breast augmentation almost never causes the change in the sensitivity uh, because the nerves are the the trace of the nerves are totally away from our pocket surgical area so it is almost impossible to affect or cut those nerves but because of uh, the the retraction or the tension on the tissue, you may feel some kind of uh, numbness or some hypersensation uh, early after the surgery, but within six months it totally goes back to uh, the original traditional or vaser. We do not use vaser because uh, I personally do not believe the for fat injection, you know, vaser applies a kind of ultrasonic energy to rupture the fat cells. So to get a living fat cells, we need to get, to my personal experience, we need to get valid living cells. Vaser with the ultrasonic energy ruptures the cells, uh, but with traditional technique or power assist assisted technique, we remove the living fat cells. So I believe that the traditional technique or power assist assisted technique uh, the fat uh, survival rate increases greatly uh, but vaser is a very good technique for doing liposuction to the body uh, sometimes we combine it with, with the power assist, assisted technique with the vaser in selected patients and what else Bashka. Yukarıya doğru gidiyor. Evet. Baş... Aşağı, aşağı, aşağıya doğru gidiyor ya. Aa, o... Bunlara cevapladık galiba. Şey Başka yok. Şimdi başka bir şey gelmiyor. Başka yok. O zaman buruna geçelim mi? Ee, Sorar mısın? Yani başka Any questions about the breast surgery? Because I have to shortly mention the nose operations, nose jabs. I think no question. Yes, in all aesthetic surgeries, the aim is to get in the nose. Uh, let's start with the rhinoplasty. The aim of the rhinoplasty is to get, is to get a good shape of the nose uh, with good functionality. Breathing is very important because it's a functional organ. Uh, uh, your uh, aesthetic surgery on the nose should not disturb the breathing, should even make it much better. Uh, so, uh, so that's why we do not make the nose too small. Uh, 10 or 15 years ago, uh, the definition of the rhinoplasty is to make the nose smaller. Now, definition has drastically changed. In the last 10 years, we've been calling it shaping the nose. In some patients, we even place some cartilage grafts to make, especially in oriental noses, to get a good shape of nose. So, uh, so that means we plan differently for each patient, and depending on the patient's expectations, if they are realistic, we try to uh, make our surgical plan and discuss all the details with the patient, and uh, so go on with the surgery. 
Uh, there's uh, this surgery is not just like shaping a piece of clay or just carving a piece of wood. We work on tissues, mainly cartilage on, and bone. Uh, there are some limitations of the rhinoplasty because we uh, shape the cartilage and bone, and there's a great huge skin on this. If the skin thickness is too much, uh, then if we try to make the reduce the cartilage and bone volume too much, then this thick skin uh, ends up with a very puffy and big tip noses. So in uh, thick skin, we actually try not to make the noses too small. So uh, why I'm trying to explain those details to you is because um, the main determinant is the patient's expectations. First, we listen to uh, their expectations, and if those things fit to our surgical plans, then patient gets a good, good result. If patient's expectations rests here, and our surgical plan with the photographs or during the consultation rests here, then patients will not be happy. So that's why your uh, expectations should be realistic. It is not just like, again I'm repeating, just like shaping a piece of clay. Uh, it's a tissue, many different structures, and rhinoplasty is known to be the, the, the most difficult surgery in the plastic surgery era, and we are trying to um, get the very good result with our operations. And uh, I mean, uh, you know, the, the risks of the surgery, the, the revision risk is uh, seen in the rhinoplasty. In overall, throughout the world, the risk of revision surgery is uh, more or less 20%, but in our country it's uh, very low, but sometimes we can do the revision, although it's very rare. Uh, this surgery is done uh, under general anesthesia, the patients are, uh, most of the patients, more than 80% are uh, discharged from the hospital six or seven hours after the surgery or you can be hospitalized for one night and depending on the problems uh, of inside your nose, I mean the septal deviation or turbinate hypertrophy, we can place some silicone splints inside. Uh, if we correct those deviations or terminate hypertrophies, there will be silicone splints and uh, an external splint outside uh, the nose and there will be a few stitches just at the columellar area. And on the first day I wish, I force you to keep your head elevated after the surgery to reduce the risk of swelling. And depending on the severity of the internal problems, we keep those uh, silicone splints three to five days and then we remove them. They're just not painful, just in a second I can remove the internal splints and they have their canals inside and one or two days after surgery you can even breathe through those uh, internal splints. It's not too much painful, it's very comfortable and six or seven days after the surgery we remove the external plastic splints, few stitches here and put some small tapes on your nose. Those tapes again with you for three to four days. That means overall at the end of 10 days, you'll be free of all tapes and bandages. That time your nose will look a little swollen. The swelling will decrease uh, drastically within a few days. And uh, let's say a week after you remove the tapes, no one can understand that you had this surgery. You can go out for shopping, you can go out for uh, doing whatever you wish. Uh, but the final shape of the nose will be at the end of uh, one year. The swelling will the first uh, days reduce drastically and then slowly, gently at the end of one year gets the final shape. During that time, no sports for one month, no heavy sports, heavy exercise for three months, no trauma, you have to protect your nose and uh, especially those eyeglasses, sunglasses, uh, three to four months you shouldn't use those eyeglasses because it disturbs uh, the result. Um, you'll use some drops and uh, sprays early after the surgery. I will explain all the details to you. And uh, even after the surgery we can sh see the shape uh, of uh, the, the nose. Although it's swollen, you'll see it, see the change. And 
10 or 15 days after surgery, we'll start some kind of massage to soften your nose, to get a good result, to uh, promote the, the resolution of the edema. And uh, it's, I think, overall spectrum of this rhinoplasty surgery, brief explanation. Yes, there will be a question for the moment. Yeah, if you had the trauma seven months ago, then we have to wait at least one year to plan because the, the healing tissues are already hard at that time. So we need to wait for one year after any surgery or any trauma to soften this area. Then we can plan your surgery. There may be some external deviations or internal deviations of the septum. Uh, we can correct all of them. Uh, if you send uh, our, your photos to us, we can evaluate. And uh, five months later, we can plan your surgery. Anna, Anna. Başka? On kişi var zaten. Şimdi benim... Ha, meme ile alakalı şey. When you have a breast reduction, how much can you take away? What is the maximum amount that can? Uh, how much can we take away? Uh, maximum amount that we can remove depends on your breast size. Before the operation, on the same day, uh, just we make some anthropometric measurements and some drawings on your breast. This means that after this pattern of resection, we end up with the shape and size of the breast that fits to your chest size, your length, and your body fits well. So depending on this, in some patients with the same shape, we remove uh, 300 grams, but in some patients even we remove four kilograms of breast. Okay, the, uh, the important thing is not the amount that we remove, just the amount that we leave behind. Because this one, this uh, amount that we leave behind gives the shape of your breast after the reduction. I had a breast reduction due to non-cancerous cell growth. The surgeon did a very bad job with the shape. And subsequently, the one breast grew a little more for a while, but no longer. What uh, want to reshape my breasts with my own fat transfer. I am not interested in transplants. Yes, we can shape your breasts with a fat injection. It has its own advantages and disadvantages because uh, you had a previous surgery. We have to evaluate if you're suitable for this kind of fat injection because uh, after every surgery, the healing tissues are normally very hard. So, and the blood circulation is reduced. So fat injection to this area may be difficult. So we have to examine you and evaluate you, or, or even if it's possible, possible we can see your photos to see uh, if the asymmetry is uh, very great or minor. If it's minor, we can correct it with some fat injections. But do not forget that uh, fat injection <coughs> technique you cannot uh, give more than 250 milliliters of fat for each session. And the 20 to 40 percent of injected fat remains with you. Rest goes away. So fat injection may be required two or three sessions of surgeries. But this is a general uh, information about this. Uh, we have to see your photos and your detailed information about your expectations and problem. Discuss this further. Dimitra. Dimitra, please write to our friends and please send the photos and your medical history, detailed medical history. 
and so that I can give you more detailed information. 2013, yes, it's a good time for revision. And also write us a messenger. And so if you do must başka soru var mı? Bunlar şimdilik böyle gözüküyor. Uh, do not forget that every surgeon wants to get a very good result, but uh, wants to make her patient or his patients happy. But in sometimes it's not may not be possible to make uh, everything perfect. What do your breasts look like after removal? Bunu cevapladık. How long does a breast reduction wound take to heal? Uh, healing changes from patient to patient. Uh, as I told you, let's say three to four days after surgery with the tapes on your incision, I mean the scar, you can have your shower. Uh, let's say 10 or 15 days after the surgery, if everything goes okay, everything goes fine, uh, we can keep all the incision site open because all stitches are inside. But if you're asking about the final scar quality, it will be at the end of one year, okay? Uh, but let's say uh, one or two months later, it's, it looks very good. I mean, the scar looks very good. But this doesn't mean that uh, the uh, scar, the tissue that this scar holds, the tissues uh, uh, bring together, uh, cannot be... <coughs> Uh, overcome within a few months, so for three months at least you have to keep or uh, prevent the scar from any trauma, any uh, stretching activity because if you do, let's say 15 days after surgery, if you try to pull apart the incision site, then this, this incision site will detach. So for a few months, let's say two or three months, you have to protect your scar area. Başka yok herhalde. Zaten bir saat oluyor. Ayrılalım mı? Bunlar bitmiş. Başka yok. Oraya bak. Var mı? Can you have breast augmentation with implants a couple years after having a breast reduction and lift? It can be done, but normally with the breast reduction and lift surgery, we try to get the final shape of the breasts. If the, the tissues remove too much during the breast reduction, then you may need a augmentation surgery. And if the lift uh, during the first operation, they did the breast lift surgery. In another session, let's say one or two years later, we can augment it with the silicone implant. Yes, it can be done. Okay. Yes, I think this time is enough. There is not any question more. Uh, I tried to give you a brief summary of the breast surgery and rhinoplasty. Thank you for listening to me and thank you for some patience and see you soon, hopefully. Okay, see you. Sen devam et. Kesin bana. Ben yukarı çıkacağım, teşekkür Hey guys. Thank you for the time, uh, and uh, we waiting from from you your request. Uh, actually, today and uh, who will send a request? Today we will uh, make fifteen percent discount for you for all surgeries and uh, about clinics. We have two clinics in Istanbul uh, and in Bursa, and uh, very beautiful, very. Um, uh, technical clinics. 
uh, all clinics uh, about uh, details I will send you by uh, mail or WhatsApp when uh, your request uh, will come to us and uh, all detailed information about our uh, clinics and about our uh, doctors we will send to you uh, by social media if you want of course. Uh, thank you for your time, uh, thank you for your listening. Uh, we will uh, happy uh, to see you in our clinics. And uh, what about uh, Алина, здравствуйте еще раз. Что по поводу сказал доктор, так как у вас 7 месяцев назад была операция, он только сможет сделать после года все, что вы запросили. Он, конечно же, все это сделает и вам поможет. Фотографии как бы были посланы ему, просто из-за того, что он вас не видит, он как бы не помнит вас, но все фотографии были посланы, он все посмотрел, все оценил. И то, что вы запрашиваете, мы можем сделать только через год после именно той операции, которая у вас была. Если у вас еще есть какие-то вопросы, пожалуйста, пишите мне, мы ответим вам на них. And uh, so, guys, uh, thank you for your time, for your listening. Uh, Goodbye.